Welcome back to another Google AdMob tutorial. Today, we'll be covering the second part of our Native Advanced series, focusing on native ad implementations and important policy reminders. In the first of our two-part series, we looked at what native ads are and why they're useful. In this video, we'll review some best practices that you can employ when incorporating native ads. We'll then discuss what to avoid when using native ads, and then conclude with some native ad policy reminders to ensure you remain compliant without any interruptions to your ads. Let's start with some best practices. The first thing you want to do is make sure video demand is enabled. Doing so ensures you're opted in for every type of demand, which will in turn maximize your ad fill rates and eCPMs. You can make sure you're opted in by ticking the video box option as seen here. Next, take time to understand your user journey and make the ad seem like a natural part of your app experience. You can do this by matching the color, design, and size to the design language of your app's UI. While you want your ad to fit with the look of your app, you also want to make sure your users know your ad is an ad. Make sure your ads are distinct from the content of your app by incorporating subtle changes like elevation or drop shadows. You should also be sure to include an ad badge or icon, which we'll be discussing later on in the video. These simple design tweaks can help your ad stand out from surrounding elements while still looking like it belongs within your app. Our final best practice is to test multiple native designs and implement the best ones. After all, different designs perform better in different apps, app categories, or regions. Try Firebase A-B testing to test different ad designs. Now, let's take a look at a developer who has found success with native ads using Firebase A-B testing. Muslim Pro is one such case. Their challenge was to create the best user experience while also maximizing monetization. But they didn't know what the best user experience entailed and what type of ad format suited them best. So they engaged in A-B testing for native display and native video. In doing so, they found their optimal ad formats and implementation technique. This resulted in a 43% increase in eCPMs and a respective 30% rise in revenue. Now that you're equipped with the know-how, we'll run through what to avoid when using native ads. Developers should avoid creating native ads that look exactly like their banners. Instead, consider using native ad templates and customizing them. This helps you create native ads that are not too simple or basic. Advanced users can opt to start from scratch and design their own ads from the ground up for a fully customized ad experience. In general, developers should not use native to copy other ad formats, such as app open, as this may violate ad mob policies. Finally, let's review a few important policy reminders to help make sure that your ads are compliant with ad mob policy. First, the ad view must be above 32 dp for Android or PTS for iOS in both width and height. Second, the main asset should be rendered in media view. This main asset media view must be above 120 by 120 to serve video ads. Our second policy reminder revolves around attribution. There are two parts to this, ad attribution and the ad choices icon. When looking at ad attribution, we require that your ads must display the word ad or advertisement. Otherwise, your ad should include a badge that says ad with a minimum 15 pixel height to width. With ad choices or ads by Google icon, we require you to have something like this. The reason for having an ad attribution and the ad choices icon is to differentiate the ad from the content of your app. So what exactly constitutes distinct differentiation? One, ensure that the ad attribution and ad choices or ads by Google icon is not hidden in any way. Second, ensure none of the ad attributes look like navigation features within your app. For example, avoid placing X closing icons or forward or back buttons as elements of your native ads. Third, ensure any white space or background image is not clickable. This means that only ad titles, URLs, CTAs, and non-background image assets should be clickable. We recommend checking for extra white space around text you did not intend to place. And that concludes the second part of our native ads two-part series. To recap, understand the user journey and make the ad an integrated part of the user experience. Don't use native ads to copy other ad formats as this could violate ad mob policies. Don't make the ad look intrusive to the user. Try using the same colors of the app UI and don't stick to the same design all the time. Finally, stay policy compliant with your native ads by keeping to the dimensions described previously 
and include both the ad attribution and ad choices icons. Your ads should also be clearly distinct from the rest of your app interface to prevent accidental clicks. Once again, thank you for watching Google AdMob tutorials. We hope you find them useful. But before you jump off, we have even more resources down by the description box to make sure your native ad experience with us is the best one possible. And one last thing, be sure to subscribe to the Google AdMob channel for more best practices and tips on how you can grow your app even further.